Well, finding one was very, really interesting for us. And we wanted to start with that one because it's really a sentiment question. It's really around taking a look at how manufacturing experts from the, from the sea level all the way down are really feeling about the state of manufacturing today. And it's kind of interesting finding in the fact that it's a bit of good news, bad news, positive, negative sentiment mixed together. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into one of the questions in particular in a second, but it, when you look at this, uh, these survey results, what you really see is that there's both optimism and a bit of negativity in how people responded. And it's kind of an interesting, interesting domain we live in. When we dive into a couple of those questions, one of each, actually one more positive, one more negative, when we take a look at the optimism around the future of manufacturing, it was kind of interesting finding that only 22% of the respondents uh, actually f weighed themselves as, as positive and optimistic about the future of manufacturing. And that's a kind of a negative uh, sentiment in many ways. And it kind of reflects to what we're gonna see a little bit later about the challenges, but it's a super important finding. It means that people recognize there's a lot to be done and there's a lot to go. At the same time, however, uh, a lot of uh, the respondents responded very positively to the idea that in fact, technology is actually going to be a factor in helping to overcome some of the negative sentiment. And in particular, one of the questions we asked was around its impact on upscaling workforce. And you'll see why we asked that in a few minutes, but almost 80% of respondents said it would have a positive impact. So those are kind of important findings together that there's some, some, some worry about the sentiment, but in fact, there's a lot of optimism that there are ways of, of improving manufacturing. So what we want to do right now is take the opportunity to let you respond to the same question. So uh, in the poll, uh, this should be popping up on your screen now. We'd like you to take the moment to respond to this about how much you agree or disagree with the following statement that adopting advanced technology like purpose-built artificial intelligence, IoT, and machine learning would positively impact your workforce upscaling efforts. So take a moment uh, now and, and click the button. And as you do that, we will be able to get over and, and see what, uh, what each of you said. And, and we can see results are beginning to come in already and they're quite interesting. Uh, almost 60, 67% of you had said they would have a positive impact and 33%, oops, changing in real time as we go, that's awesome. But uh, almost no one saying it's neutral would have a negative impact. So that's a pretty important finding for us. And that's super, super important and, and pretty much reflects a, an equivalent to what we said. So with all of that, now I'd like to turn to our panel. And, and as we do that, I'd like to start this out with, uh, with, um, with Preet. Uh, Indra Preet, let's, let's start with you. So at ARC, you do a lot of research into manufacturing sentiment and how people talk about their challenges. So does this find, do these findings, the sentiment uh, findings, do they say anything unique to you? And, and as, you talk to, as you talk to people, what are you hearing from them about the challenges and how does this sentiment reflect what you hear at ARC? Yeah, James, you know, at ARC as well, we try to talk to a lot of end users. We try to do similar kind of surveys to, you know, understand, you know, what end users are facing, what kind of challenges they are seeing. And we absolutely, these are the major challenges that we see in the industry today. But when, uh, you know, one positive thing is that AI and ad other advanced technologies and users feel that this is going to help the manufacturing sector. And I personally believe in that. And it was good to see that, you know, majority in the industry feel the same way. But when it comes to challenges, you know, there are some challenges that we have been hearing about from a very, very long time, such as skills gap. That's also on the survey. We have been hearing about that from the last 15, 20 years. And then some are newer challenges like supply chain. We started hearing about that, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, three years ago since the pandemic and still remains a major challenge. Um, but one little bit positive thing about, you know, supply chain challenges is that in the past six months of this year, uh, I have been hearing from end users that things are improving a little bit. It's better compared to, you know, what was the situation in last one year. So I think I'm really hopeful that the next six months, things will, again, you know, keep on getting better. So that's one positive thing that I'm hearing about supply chain issues. And of course, we also hear about onshore uh, initiate, onshoring initiatives. Government is doing a lot around that, trying to push that. We definitely see. Yeah, so we see all similar challenges. We see similar trends. And one major trend about, you know, all these uh, challenges is that end users, they are trying to adopt technology and use the technology to address 
various different challenges that they have. You know, we talk about skills gap. We are seeing the use of uh, virtual reality technology, augmented reality technology. We are seeing the use of uh, technology related to knowledge capture. When it comes to onshoring, we are seeing the use of technology to help lower the cost, improve profitability, so you know we can bring the manufacturing back to U.S. Supply chain issues, we saw a lot of end users who weren't using supply chain planning softwares. They are trying to use that and see how they can optimize their supply chain planning. So one major trend definitely is use of technology to help address all these challenges. Great, thank you. Thank you, and appreciate appreciate your perspective. Dave, let's, let's, let's turn to you now. So you've led organizations through similar challenges and through how to tackle some of these challenges. Did any of the results surprise you from an insider's perspective? And, and to follow that on, what are some of the key takeaways you think that from your own experience are, are important for people to think about as they, as they think about the sentiment of manufacturing and the use of technology? So thanks, James. I I think, were they a surprise? I think the positive surprise was that people are seeing the skills angle as a real opportunity. And I think that was a positive surprise. I think some of the others may be a little bit more expected. But, but all of this for me is about the perspective on this. A lot of challenge comes from, from the unknown, whether that's a fear of unknown or just a resistance to it. And, and I think what I always try and tell people about the journey with technology is kind of three phases. It's about moving from data to knowledge to wisdom. And then when we navigate that well, that can reap real rewards for manufacturing. It's also about looking at your manufacturing performance, probably through a slightly different lens, which is one is more driven by data and insights. And that can often reveal newer perspectives and newer views. It's like looking through that different lens. And often we see opportunities where we can improve even further. The trick is always about combination and complementers for me. I always found that when we start to combine the insights, we create, you know, the combine the individual pieces of insight or knowledge, then together we get a better point of wisdom, which is really what we're trying to do. And I think all the points in the survey, whether it's supply chain performance or, or quality or sustainability, they're actually all really connected. Because if we're honest, a lot of the disturbances in supply chain are often internally generated. So the predictability and reliability of manufacturing performance is actually essential for the long-term stability of supply chain performance. And the knowledge and the skills of all our people are essential in that. And I think, you know, on the skills front, I think that the poll from the audience was quite positive. And I think there are a, there is a section of, of out there that, that fear this a little bit. And I, the example I always use is, you know, there are going to be changes in jobs and roles. But you know what? In the last industrial revolutions, we didn't have railway engineers until we invented the railways. Yeah. And I'm sure to get those railway engineers, we probably retrained some of the people who used to look after the horses. So will it change? Yes. But I'm absolutely confident that there's going to be more newer roles than there are other roles maybe fading out a little bit. And I think the traditional skill sets that we all know are still essential because they they need to translate this data into the real world. And I think that's what, so, so it's more about skills enhancement than it is about skills replacement for me. Uh, when people get concerned about skills, I always say, well, are, are, we, are we enhancing skills or are we replacing them? And often it's more enhancement.